consider a scenario let's say that your mother is making you hot soup or hot coffee now when she places the soup or the coffee in front of you which is very hot tell me something do you drink it instantly obviously not why because when she makes the coffee or the soup and brings it in front of you it is very hot so what you do is you wait for a while for it to cool down that is you wait so that the heat of the soup or the coffee decreases now what do you think happens to the case of heat in a coffee or soup consider the picture over here over here say that this is a bowl of soup now if you keep this for a long time you will find that the heat of the soup or the coffee decreases why because heat travels from one point to another point now we have studied that light travels from one point to another point just like sound travels from one point to another point so light and sound both can travel from one point to another point in the same way heat also travels in between points so this is the reason why we can feel the heat of the sun that is coming from the sun to the earth and this is the same reason why if we sit in front of a fireplace that is burning we are able to feel the heat of the fireplace burning now tell me something why do you think heat travels at all or in other words as in the case of the sun and earth why do you think heat only travels in this direction that is from the sun to earth or in the case of the fireplace and the person sitting in front of it why is it that heat travels from the fire to the person why not the other way round in either case or in other words we can ask that why does heat travel at all now consider this when a hot body is kept in contact of or near a cold body it will be noticed after some time that a hot body becomes less hot and the cold body becomes less cold we can illustrate this with a practical example during winter time when you take a bath you open the hot water tap and the cold water tap together now the water that you get is neither very hot nor very cold but if you were to switch on the water tap individually that is the hot water tap separately and the cold water tap separately you will notice that the water from the hot water tap is hotter and the water from the cold water tap is colder than the water which you get when you open both taps so what do you think is happening in this case the water that you are getting is mixed that is the hot water tap is giving away its heat to the cold water so this can also be considered as a separate example if you take two buckets of water one which contains hot water and the other which contains cold water and if you take the hot water and pour it into cold water you will find that the resulting water is neither very hot nor very cold so what can we say we can say that the hot body or in this case the hot water is becoming less hot and the cold body or in this case the cold water becomes less cold so the heat is transferred from the hot body to the cold body and as we can see heat energy flows from the hot body to the cold body so how do you think we can determine how heat will flow from one body to another body how can we measure the degree of hotness or coldness of a body this is done with the help of a physical quantity known as temperature temperature is nothing but the degree of hotness or coldness of a body if you recall previously i mentioned that if a body is more hot then it has more heat in it and if a body is less hot or cold then it has less heat in it so likewise temperature can tell us how hot or cold a body is that is the degree of hotness or coldness it is also a quantity which determines the direction in which heat will flow from one body to another because we just saw that heat flows from a hot body to a cold body and a hot body contains more heat and a cold body contains less heat so temperature is also a measure in which direction heat will flow the heat will flow from the hot body to the cold body 
until both of them attain the same temperature. That is the hot body's temperature will come down and the cold body's temperature will go up and the heat transfer will continue for as long as both the bodies do not attain the same temperature. So just like we saw in the previous case, heat flowed from the sun to the earth because the sun is at a much, much higher temperature than earth. Similarly, heat flowed from the fireplace to the person because the fireplace where fire is burning is at a much higher temperature than the person is. Now let us get behind the science of heat and temperature. Heat is basically a form of energy which makes the atoms in our body or any given body vibrate or jiggle. So as you can see, heat makes the particles of a body jiggle. And as you can see in the animation, this jiggling of the atoms or the particles in the body gives us a measure of heat. In the first case, if you notice that no heat is being supplied to the given vessel. The burner is off. And in the second case, the burner is switched on and we can see that the jiggling or vibration of particles has increased. Now let us explain what is happening. When there is no heat being supplied, the particles are vibrating to and fro about their position normally. But the moment heat is being applied, we are increasing the temperature of the particles. So as a result, we can see that they are starting to vibrate or jiggle more or more vigorously. So what do you think is happening? The moment they start to vibrate or jiggle more vigorously, we can see that their speed is increasing. So the moment we are increasing the temperature, the speed of the particles in the medium is also increasing. And we know that when the speed of a particle increases, its kinetic energy also increases along with it. So what can we say? We can say that when the temperature is increasing, the kinetic energy of the medium particles is also increasing. Thus we can say that temperature is the measure of kinetic energy due to vibration of the jiggling particles. Now since both temperature and heat are quantities, there must be a way in which we can measure them. Indeed there is. Heat is measured in these two units, that is calorie or joules. Calorie is depicted as Cal and joules by J. Heat is a form of energy and that is why joules is also used to measure heat energy. Similarly, temperature is also measured in two units that we have degree Celsius or Kelvin. Now the SI unit for measuring heat is joule and the SI unit for measuring temperature is Kelvin. Now let us define what one calorie of heat is. One calorie of heat is the amount of heat energy that is required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. That is, if you have taken one gram of water and you want to raise the temperature of that water by one degree Celsius, you will have to apply a heat of one calorie. That is, heat energy should be applied of one calorie. Now, the relation between calorie and kilocalorie is given. One kilocalorie is equal to a thousand calories. So if we have been given one kilogram of water and we have to raise its temperature by one degree Celsius, what we do is we apply heat energy of one kilocalorie. I mentioned previously that there are two units for measuring heat, joule and calorie. And these two units are related by this expression which states that one calorie is equal to 4.2 joules. So taking a quick recap, we learned about the concept of temperature. Temperature is a physical quantity which gives us a measure of the hotness or coldness of a body. It also denotes in which direction heat will flow from one body to another. We also learned that temperature is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of a particular body. That is, more the temperature of a body, more will be the kinetic energy of the particles inside the body. Because when we are supplying heat, we are increasing the temperature and that causes the particles in the medium to vibrate more 
or to jiggle more vigorously.